it's me, little Frenchie, and I'm going to teach you how to do a little cottage in the woods. This is the painting, and as you can see, my cottage is different shapes. Um, sometimes it turns a little bit better than others, trial and error. So I'm gonna go through and give you the supply list of the things that you need. Number one, four by six paper. Um, I use 100 and 140 pound weight paper, just works better as you're trying um, to paint. Um, Holds the water better, doesn't, it just makes things a lot easier when you get a heavier weight paper. So the colors we're using, like always, I try to use the least amount of colors in a painting um, just because it makes things easier when you're painting. Um, it's, you learn color theory and you learn how to mix your own colors and it's just the better way to paint. Um, I tried using a palette that had like 30 colors and it was incredibly hard for me to use it because I'm like, oh... It just wasn't coming out right. So, four colors I used were Quince Cerdone Burnt Orange. I would say Burnt Sierra is a good one too. And we've got Ultramarine Blue, Hansa Yellow, and a Burnt Umber. Now, if you do not have these colors, that's okay. I'm just use a color that you have in your palette that's similar. But, um, you know, like the cool yellows and the cool blue and however you decide to do it, but just make sure that the colors that you do pick, that you keep your palette limited um, because it makes things a lot easier and it makes your painting colors more cohesive. All right, you need to know the drill for the brushes. It's the same every time. Ah, you know the drill. All right, so we've got a round number eight and round number four. You can see them. They're round, they're my favorite brushes, get them. These are the only two brushes you get, get them. As we proceed on with this, I make more and more videos. If you have requests and want me to see me use other types of brushes, I'll be more than happy to do that for you. So, I can't wait to see you, and please like my page, subscribe down below, leave a comment, tell me what you like, what you don't like, and believe in yourself. I've had a lot of people tell me I couldn't do watercolor, and yes, you can but you have to practice and you have to try. And I know you can if you do it. Um, happy painting and see you on the other side of the video. Thanks. All right, let's begin doing this painting. We're gonna go in and put in some drawings for our guidelines. Um, I like to go a third of the page down um, when I'm doing my horizon lines and I'm just gonna put it in it doesn't have to be exact It's just to give you guidance of where things are gonna go now I'm going to put this building in and you can make it as wide or tall or narrow as you want And so I've done it this uh, several times and each time the building has always come out a little bit different And so I'm just gonna go in and put two lines This is kind of like when you're a kid and you're drawing a house except we're gonna make it 3d so we're gonna begin and do the front side and put two lines in and do, do add the triangle on top. So look, you have a house like you did when you were a kid. This is where we put in the 3D. So we're gonna, I'm gonna put a line in here, and then a line over here, and we're gonna match this angle. Now this is basically just to give you some guidelines when we're painting. It doesn't have to be exact or perfect because this is watercolor and this is out of your imagination so you can I'm about to put some windows in you can make your windows any way you like you can they can be round they can be square use your imagination because this isn't a real ha house so I'm gonna do a curved window in the front here put it in and then I'm gonna do a couple square windows now as you can see I'm doing different shapes Kind of makes it more visually appealing when you have a painting if there are things that are um, not necessarily exactly symmetrical or straight I'm just kind of roughing it rough drawing it in so I'm going to take my number eight round brush and I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to do um, my orangish brown new burnt Sierra um, burnt Sierra Whatever you have in for your palette, um, this color is kind of hard to see, but it's put it down here. You see this kind of like an orangey brown. Whatever you have, just use it. Um, that should be good. So I'm gonna put some in over my palette over here. As you can see, my color stained my palette. It's washing it off, and it wouldn't come off. It just depends on the colors you got. And I'm gonna go in 
and I'm going to do the roof first. I'm going to come in and just do the background of the roof. And as I'm putting it in, we're going to go in different spots of this painting because while certain spots dry, we're going to work on other areas too. And as you can see, I didn't go in the lines and that's quite okay. I'm going to go in and then I'm going to do do the ground. So this is a painting I'm, that I did earlier that I'm working off of. As you can see, we're, I'm just going to put lines in here. I'm just kind of, however, I'm just going to go back, back and forth and it's kind of like a dirt road or, you know, and I'm just going to just put them in there. How, it doesn't have to be fancy or measured. And then I'm going to go in and put a line over here for this other part of the roof line. I'm gonna clean my brush and then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna take a little burnt umber, put it on my palette. And I'm going to also do a little blue. Now you can use any blues you like or any browns you like. Um, it doesn't have to be exactly what I'm doing. You do what you have. But I would like this painting that you're trying to be as least amount of colors as possible. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab my 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 four brush and grab some of this and make a gray so, so taking my blue and my brown makes a nice gray and I'm gonna just go in make some lines like it's siding now your siding can go this way or it can go whatever way you want and as you can see I'm just going right over the windows and Mainly that's because we're gonna put them, make make black and put them in later. And this way your lines go all the way through. You ever try to do a line on the top of something and then go on the other side and you don't measure up? That's the story of my life. I always do that. And so finally if I just go through it first and then put the dark over it, it works better. So this is just kind of the lines that are, and if you decide to go this way, just make sure as you're doing them that you, put them in as as it's 3d so I'm gonna make some more of my um, burnt umber and my French ultramarine blue and I'm gonna mix it up and I'm gonna use a lot of pigment because I want to make black and with black as you can see I made this gray when you want to make black you're just gonna use more of your paint ha have a higher saturation and you're gonna get um, a darker hue of that so the reason I'm doing this is because we're gonna put in those windows and as you see how fast this dries because I did just a really light um, of the lines for the siding and so I'm gonna it's already dry. As you can see, this part, the, the roof is not dry yet, so I'm going to wait for that because next I want to put in the, uh, the shrubbery in the background and the trees. And you can see it's bleeding a little bit into in there, and that's, that's okay. That's the beauty of watercolor. And I'm just going in, and as you can see, I'm not being real exact with my, my windows. Like, I'm not not stain in the lines and, and that's okay and I'm gonna go in and put in this rounded window it's kind of like an old barn shed and I find sometimes when I make colors they unmix on my palette and I usually have to go in and remix them so this this is gonna take a while to dry because it's the saturations heavy and I used a little bit more water and so while we wait for that dry, we're going to work on other parts of the painting. And then I'm going to go in and put more shadowing in those doors and windows or whatever you want to call them. And so it gives them that looks like they're um, inside outside. 
I'm gonna go back to my fat brush. And I paint a lot, so I always have some leftover colors. And so this is um, New Gamboge and French Ultramarine Blue to make some green, and there might be other paints in there, and quite frankly, it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna go and I pre-wetted it before I started this video. And I'm just gonna go in and tap in trees, and it's gonna be very like wet and sappy because I'm gonna be putting in some more color in there. So I'm just gonna go in. And, you're, and I usually start smaller on top and then widen as I, as I go down. And you can see I've got a lot of paint on my brush and a lot of water and I'm just kind of going in and I want, I love the rule of thirds. I'm probably gonna put in two, three trees in here. One, two, and then a third one over here. And then we're gonna put the lines in for the um, branches later. So as I'm putting this in, we're gonna kind of, it's kind of got trees all over, but the three main trees, these are it. And this is their background. And I'm just gonna put that in there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab some new gamboge and I'm just gonna splatter it in here. As you can see, it's starting to mix and it'll give a little bit of a different color in there. And I'm gonna grab some in and now I'm gonna put like the bushes and the higher bushes. It's kind of like a house that's been abandoned and mother nature's starting to take it over. So it really doesn't matter like honestly where you put your trees. You just wanna make it more visually appealing when you're looking at the painting to, of where you're putting it. So I'm just doing this background and I'm gonna have it go some of it over onto the actual building and I'm gonna put some over here because it's just mother nature has taken over this building because humans have not been taken care of anymore and I'm and I'm not loving a new gamboge I'm gonna try some of my Hansa yellow and just put yeah I like that much the Hansa yellow you you use whatever you have so I'm putting a cool yellow in there because I'm waiting for it to dry I'm going to make some more darker green so we can layer it. So as you're as you're doing this, you you, you layer your colors. So we're going to make some more green. I'm going to put some water on here. I don't know if you can see. Just putting a bunch of water, and then I'm going to take some of my handsy yellow, my cool yellow, and just put it on there. And then I'm gonna get my French Ultramarine. Clean off my brush because I want too much yellow in there. See, I'm trying to grab as much as I can in there. Gives this nice sort of green, darker hue. And I might put a dab here and there. See as you can, but it's still wet, so it's gonna kind of spread it out. I'm just put it do some dabs over here and just really just go through and just put it and it doesn't matter because once it dries it's going to give that appearance of layeredness and then we'll go in with more finer detail um, after it completely dries so you can put some here and I'm going to clean my brush And I'm going to go in and I'm going to grab some of my burnt umber. And I feel like it's too, too, too orange. I'm just going to add a tiny bit of my blue in there just to mellow it out a little bit. And I'm going to put kind of lines where the dirt is. I'm just going to dab it where there's open space and put it here and put it there. And I'm probably going to do another layer of the the lighter brown in there to make it give it more depth now you can see um my roof is pretty much dried as we put painting everything else so i'm gonna grab s some more of this color i'm gonna mix it a little bit with my burnt umber i'm just mixing and i'm gonna water it down a little bit because i don't want it too strong hold on let me grab this, my little paper. So I have, I always keep this on the side to kind of see like what color am I actually is it gonna come out as. That's good. 
and I'm just gonna go in and put put lines in here back and back and forth like roof lines it doesn't have to be exact but just put them in there and then I'm gonna darken this up put it in there and I want that light to be in there so it gives it some depth I'm gonna move this out of the way all right, so this is kind of very soppy right now, so I'm gonna pause the video, dry it, and then we'll continue on. All right, I'm back, and I dried everything out. You can see it's all pretty dry and how it mixed. You can see some of my, my, my roof line went into the trees, and that's okay, sometimes that happens. If it really bothers you, you can always wash it out, but I feel like with this painting, that it's like, the shrubbery and the trees and the backgrounds that it doesn't matter so I'm gonna pick up some more of my brown over here and then I'm gonna put some more lines into the roof line just put it in there and I'm gonna darken up underneath here and I'm gonna go in I want to grab some more of my my orangey brown and just do some fine lines in here. Remember how I taught you previously when you do one of finer lines you hold it back further back on the paintbrush and then you hold it straight up and you just kind of wisp it in and it kind of makes fine lines and it's, you don't have such a heavy hand when you're doing it. And I might go back in with some darker brown and I'm gonna take that same color and add it in up here too. Now here's the fun part. I'm gonna make some more darker green. I'm gonna add some more of my blue. Whatever blue you decide to use, it's fine. Just make sure that you use the same blue throughout the painting. Same with the browns and the yellows. It really doesn't matter. This is just what I have on hand and that I like to use. And I'm gonna mix it up and then I'm gonna just do the dab method, like dab, dab, dab. And I'm not talking about the dance. <laughs> and you're just gonna go through and um, put it in. When I was a kid, um, my, my mom grew up in very northern Wisconsin, very close to the Michigan, or the Minnesota border, and it was, she would call it up north, <laughs> and basically it was like in the middle of nowhere farmland, and, and this is kind of what it reminds me of, there are like a lot of abandoned houses, and just, um, that have, were gone and left, and so I'm putting in dabbing in all my trees now if you get some on the on the house that's okay i'm just gonna go in and just dab away and now i'm getting closer to the horizon line um it's funny to think of this as a horizon considering that it's not like on the ocean but i'm gonna go in and do some tall grasses and then as i add these We'll add some more in later. I'm gonna do the same kind of over here. Do a few grass. And now we can make an even darker color of green. So there's just these various shades of the same green. And you do that by adding more pigment of whatever color that you're using. So like the blue, you can add more blue. You can add more yellow. It's gonna be more of a yellowy green, but it will be a, a more saturated color. So I'm gonna add some more of my French um, ultramarine blue. As you can see I'm just adding more and more in. You can see the color that it's becoming. And I'm just gonna dab here and there to get that more blue green throughout the painting. And it's okay if you go on stuff that's already there. Um, it'll just mix up a little bit. Now I'm gonna go in and make some more of my black so I can put a little bit of layering within the windows. So I'm taking my French ultramarine blue and I'm just gonna mix it with this brown that we've been using. It doesn't have to be the exact same black as before, but we're gonna kinda go in and just do like um, 
one corner of each of the windows to kind of show like it's got a, a ledge. So I'm just going in and adding an L shape here. Now you can do whatever side you want, but so it looks like there's a ledge in there, but it's dark. It's just dark on the inside. And I'm going to take some more of my burnt umber, mix it in, and I'm going to do just a, like a few more dark lines in here. It's kind of messy, kind of gritty. Um, I kind of, um, I want to see the shadowing under the roof eaves, and so I'm going to try. <laughs> Sometimes I'm good at, sometimes I'm going to try to add a little bit of that. And so I'm going to add, make a gray, and I'm going to take my palette again over here. And I'm going to make sure that it's the right hue of gray. So, and then I'm going to put it over here. And I'm going to water it down a bit. I'm gonna and I find if you don't like something you just go in and you can take your paper towel and it'll lift most of the color sometimes you'll take the paint that's underneath of it sometimes you won't it just depends but I'm gonna go in there and water this down a little just a little bit more And I'm gonna put a really the darker line in the corner of the house so you can kind of see that definition. And I can kind of see the green is kind of drying, kind of not put in there kind of heavy. So I'm gonna make some more darker green here. And we're gonna do another layer of green. This one is very almost tealish but not quite but it's the same colors that we've been using throughout this painting so I'm gonna add some here and see how much darker it is. Now you can use the bigger brush and it'll um, make bigger leaves so it just depends on what you're in the mood for. And then I want to go in here, it's kind of hard to see, so the camera wants to focus and put some darker leaves in. And here comes the fun part of this painting. So what I like to, I like the splatter look. I like what it does. I kind of like um, the feel it gives. And so I'm going to put this sheet, it's just my practice sheet. I like to practice things on it. I'm gonna put it here. And then I'm gonna pick up my colors. So my orangey brown. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna tap spots. And then I'm going to take my burnt umber and I'm going to do the same thing. So I get my, my brush pretty sopping wet. I don't tap it out and then I'm... And if it's not dark enough, you can pick up a darker one, however you like. Then it doesn't go onto the rest of the painting, but you might get some on your hands like I did. So you just, it comes right off. I'm gonna go in here and I kind of want to do the same thing with the greens up above so I'm gonna have that same same thing going on and I really don't want it on my house and I don't want it on my my uh, road but I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna grab my green and I'm just gonna splatter it in no, I got some on the house, so I gotta be careful. 
And then I also am going to take some yellow because this painting does have the yellow in there. And I'm going to take some of that and I'm going to do the same thing. And on the wet spots, as you can see, it's blending out, which is beautiful. I like when it does that. And then here comes the part that isn't always the easiest is putting in trees. You know, you don't want to just do like a straight line, a straight shot, because it doesn't, I'm not loving these trees when you do that. So like, you just, you can give the appearance of a tree. And usually you want to do it when your painting is um, dry, but I'm going to just, let's see what we find out. So remember we put in the three trees here. So I'm going to have one kind of, come up and this is a very overgrown area and so as you can see I didn't do the tree all the way and it is kind of spreading a bit where it's kind of wet still and that's okay we're gonna go back in once it dries and then do another layer in there I'm gonna put another tree over here and sometimes when you're looking at stuff um, from far away because the leaves and stuff will give that appearance of like it is now. See how it's spreading? And, and that's just the beauty of watercolor. And I'm going to add one more over here. And I just used my mixed up brown. And as you can see, I'm not um, going all the way down like a straight line. Because it's so, the foliage is taken over so much that you're not going to be able to see all your, your tree limbs. And it, um, you don't want to have that. So you can see the tree limbs in here and how I put them in here. And they're kind of, it's still wet. So if you don't want to do it when it's wet, that's okay too. And I just put them in there so it gives the appearance of trees. And then I'm going to take my leftover brown that I have over here. This big, just crazy color brown. But it, remember that it has all three colors in there. And I'm going to go in and add a few brown um, leaves over here just to give it some more um, definition so gonna, and if you once again use have something like your leftover scrap or whatever and practice your lines if you need to if you feel like your line like my line I just did was just way too heavy and so I don't want it to be that heavy and I'm just putting a little bit of brown in there just to give it some more and I feel like this area is lacking depth. So I'm going to go in, take this green I have, and add just a tiny bit of brown. And it's going to darken up my green. As you can see, brown will darken it up. You never want to use black. Brown is always the better um, solution. And I'm just going to go in and dab this dark green I created by adding that brown in there. And I am going to add one, this, this video is getting longer than I anticipated, one small line under the roof line to give it a little bit more definition. And so I'm just the shadows. And I use the green. Oh well. You probably can't even tell. Just gonna add some more here. And there you have it, your little cottage in the woods. And if you're bored, you could put some yellow flowers in over here. Um, I did that one of my paintings, I actually like it. Well, we do that real quick. And then we're done. Um, and if you wanna keep playing, you can. But this is pretty much, um, the end of the painting so I'm gonna just put some dandelions they're my favorite flowers and I think they're beautiful despite people always calling them weeds they're just so fun and as they get ready to blow seeds the, the little little puff balls I like to call them are just beautiful too there we go and I just added in a little bit of my dandelions and there you have it that's your painting in a half an hour and I hope you enjoy this video if you do please subscribe to my channel and give this painting a thumbs up. If you make this painting, please go over to my um, Facebook page, Little Frenchie. Um, come over there and show me what you've done. And happy painting, everybody.